Hello, everybody. It's really great to be able to finally, 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 after the team has been working for almost a year now to put together everything that is necessary to roll out Ignite Culture. We're really, really proud to be the implementing partners. That's we, the team at HIVA Fund, in partnership with the British Council Kenya and with the financial contribution of the European Union and further support from the organization of ACP states to be able to give grants of up to a maximum of 180,000 euro for the support of creative and cultural industries in 14 countries in East Eastern Africa. This is a really, really exciting moment for us, this in Ignite Culture. And I really wanted us to start um, right at the HIVA Fund page where you can find the link to the application. So the best thing to do would be to come, make sure you read the entire overview. Here we have the terms the eligibility and the application process, all of which are expanded on here. So the minute you click on terms, you will be taken right to where the terms begins. If you go back up here and you click on eligibility, you'll go right down to eligibility. And all these things have been explained really, really well. So just take your time, read them very, very slowly. The fund application will close on the 15th of September at 11.59 PM. So there's plenty of time to just kind of sit down with these things, read them slowly, carefully, make a relatively leisurely decision about whether you want to apply alone, whether you want to apply with several people. There's time. You have a little bit of time. So don't please don't feel rushed just because um, it was launched yesterday and you want to get it in immediately. Just kind of take your time with it. We also talk about what the application process is like, where once the application form is completed, people will be able to receive a notification that the application has been received and then we talk a bit about the evaluation process now i wanted to talk about this a little bit before we go into the form here at the bottom of the page you will see downloads we have our frequently asked questions which we'll be updating depending on the information that people ask us for and so if you click here the frequently asked questions will open as a separate pdf where you'll be able to come and find all sorts of questions like how do i apply for finance Financing. Does my business type or area of business qualify for financing? All of these questions have already been answered. How long is the fund available for? How old does my organization have to be to apply for Ignite Culture? How much money can I apply for? How will I know if my business has made a successful application? What does applying in a group or consortium entail? If you're applying as a group, how much can we apply for together? A lot of these questions have already been answered here. We also have a very specific guideline for applications, um, just so that again, you can go through it in your own time. And again, just like I said, we are closing on 15th September 2021 at 11.59 p.m. East African time. So just go read through these things very, very slowly, very, very carefully. Again, the Ignite Culture team is always available, especially the comms team on all of our social media profiles. We are available on Facebook, on Twitter, and on Instagram. So if you have questions, just kind of drop us a line there in our comments, in our DMs. We'll be more than happy to um, cycle back to you. Also, we have the email igniteculture at hivafund.com. That's igniteculture at hivafund.com. Just drop us a line there if there's anything here that's confusing for you. We also have the Kiswahili and the French overview of Ignite Culture, the process of getting everything translated into as many languages as possible for the purposes of the 14 country rollout is, is something that we're learning as we go. And we're really excited to make it as deep and as wide as possible. And the British Council team have also promised to be on hand to help us do that. So we'll definitely be seeing more languages, more overviews and different things like that as we go along. So I just wanted to kind of run a through that. I also wanted to mention that on the British Council page, if you actually just Google British Council, East Africa, Ignite Culture, you will get the link that brings you here. And so essentially, it's exactly the same information. Please don't feel that this is different information. You'll see that they have eligibility here. It's the same information that we have. We also have for the application process, we talk about the same things and they have exactly the same downloadable. So don't worry that they have different information than we do. We also have a downloadable that talks about definitions of terms that you may find in the application. So if you want to understand what exactly is a value chain, how exactly are we defining fashion? How are we defining apparel? How are we defining live music and cultural events? Um, again, please don't feel 
profoundly limited, especially as regards um, the different value chains. We're very, very open, and our definitions of different creative sector, sub-sectors, and sub-genres remains very open and very um, flexible. So please feel free around it. Um, things like company name, duration of operation, full-time employee, PIN certificate number, uh, grant amount, planned use of grant. There's a lot of these terms here. So please feel free to download that as well and just kind of keep it open in case you feel like you want to make quick uh, referrals back to what these things may mean. And so let's actually just go straight into the application. So when you click apply now, this is the page that, that, that the link takes you to. And the first thing that you see is this introduction, please, we'd really like you to read it. These over here are actually links if you want to be able to share this application with people on Facebook, on Twitter, on LinkedIn, or by email. This follow has to do with this This platform is called Submittable, the one that we're using for um, these applications. And so if you want to follow this particular form, you're able to do that. One really exciting thing about this form is this uh, little toggle here. You can invite collaborators, and I'll explain how that works a little bit just after I talk about um, how to log in so that you can um, do the form. So we have a bit of an introduction here. I urge you to read it. We talk about what the application guides you through. It's a five-stage application where we check your eligibility, we capture your contact information, we find out more about your information, find out more about your needs with regard to this particular proposal, and then you upload your, so your supporting documents. Now, this, these supporting documents that you will need to upload include a company profile, your organization's project history, and your project budget. And so these, we have a template for this. We have a template for your organization, company profile, your project history, and your project budget. And so I just want you to see what will happen when you click over there. And and so this takes you to an open Google Drive where you can just kind of download these things yourself really quickly. And so you can see um, here, if you click for the Ignite Financial Template, it will take you right here where we tell you exactly um, how to fill out the budget. So there's a tab called Budget Guidelines and there's another one called Budget Template. So once you come over here, you'll be able to fill out in the ways in which you need to. We have an example here, and so just download it and fill it for yourself, because of course this is view only, you won't be able to fill it over here when you open hours, download it for yourself, and you can see that you can easily do that in this way. So just download it for yourself and fill it in, and then you'll be able to upload it. If you go back here, you'll be able to see also the company profile is here. We ask very specific questions and we give you a maximum 300 words, maximum 300 words. Please um, follow this as well. When we say using an organogram, if you want to... If you want to see what an organogram is, you'll be able to click right there and it'll take you to the definition of an organogram as we expect it. So these are the sorts of things that are here in this Google Drive. And then the last document is a project history. And so the project history will actually just tell you what exactly it wants. So for this, it helps illustrate the previous experience you as the lead applicant has from undertaking between one to three projects or engagements in work that is similar to or aligned with the project being proposed. And so we tell you with a number of words as a limit to just kind of quickly describe what projects you've done and what how they have been useful to you. So those are the three documents um, that it would be great if you just kind of came here and downloaded them for yourself and filled them out if you're going to this application. It might, I mean, it really depends on how you do your own thing. Some people like to fill out these things first themselves, and then there are other people who prefer to just kind of have everything open. Submittable allows you to do that and I'll explain what I mean um, in a few minutes. Then we also share that you will need to share your own financial records. Of course, we can't give you a template for your own financial records. Those ones, um, those ones will be your own. And so we give you uh, any period between these years, 1st January 2018, 30th June 2021, ETC. You're welcome to invite collaborators to help you complete your submission, learn how to do this here. So you can just click here and get right into the thing. I think a thing that needs to be mentioned before we go into the filling in of the form is that you actually need to have logged in to Submittable. And let me just log out so I can show you um, what it looks like uh, when you have not um, when you've not logged in. When 
when you log into the form, the first thing that it asks you is if you're new and you need to sign up or if you need to sign in. And so I had already prepared an account before. Um, this is my account and the password. And so I just kind of sign in so that I can proceed with the form. You'll need to get a submittable account in order to do that. So the person who's going to be doing the applying is the one who should kind of keep track of that. So here we are and we're opening this right now and already, of course, I'm logged in and so we can proceed. The best way to go through the filling in of this form is to go through each part and remember that it guides you through um, all these five stages and we're going to go through each and every one of those five stages as, as we've discussed before. The first thing to say is that you can invite collaborators to fill in this form with you and so if you click invite collaborators you'll see that I've already invited one of my colleagues whose name is George to join me and so it tells me that this is pending, that I've invited George but George has not yet joined me in the form. This is me this is the form. If I wanted to add another collaborator, I can add somebody else. I have a colleague who is in admin and their address is admin. So I can actually just invite them and then they'll be added as another collaborator on this form. And so even if you click here, you'll be able to see that both admin and George are pending um, in this regard. If you want to go back to the main form, all you have to do is click cancel here and then you can go back to the form. So let's go through each of these stages one by one. The eligibility checker, the capturing of your contact information, finding out more about your organization, and finding out more about your needs, and uploading your supporting documents. So remember, as regards supporting of uploading documents, um, there are templates for these, and we discussed the three templates that are here for this. There's also one more thing to upload, which will be the financial records um, for this period. So um, just prepare those as well. Again, some people People like to do this before others want to do it as the thing goes again we're really excited that submittable allows you to just kind of it saves where you've gotten to you can start the application today come back tomorrow come back next week it'll still be there waiting for you so please don't worry this is for you to pick the country in which your organization is registered and so for example if my organization is registered in madagascar um, that is what i would pick um, I would pick in which countries my project will be implemented. And maybe I'm implementing in Madagascar, Seychelles, and Mauritius. So let's say I'm doing those three. How many years has my organization been in operation? Again, please note uh, this, this information in gray whenever you find it under question. It means it's really important to how the question is being um, responded to. Because the funding is only open to sole or lead applicants who are registered in or before the year 2018, that means that your organization needs to have been in operation for at least two years, more than two years usually. So if you come and put one, then we already know that your, your you're not eligible. The thing that we've been saying uh, to organizations that are younger, if you are registered in 2019, 2020, and after that, is that um, you are very, very able to approach an organization that was registered in 2018 or before uh, so that they can apply as the lead applicant and you would be there um, as a, a partnering organization. So please don't feel um, as though this thing has left you out. You're just able to participate in a different capacity. So here we are with the years we've been in operation. Let's say I've been in operation for four years and that I am registered as a sole proprietorship. Then over here, as regards the primary focus of your proposed project, so you read all of these ones and then you see which one resonates most with, the, with, with what you want to do. And if, it, if you find it resonates most with several of them, then please pick the one that it resonates the most for. So for the purposes of my hypothetical application, I'm really interested in teaching young people skills that enable them to enter the industry and to build the capacities to enter the industries, to enter the creative and cultural sector. So I just tick that. If I had picked this one, you'll find that it can have a subsection. Some of them have subsections, others don't. And so now we come to our main area of focus. And for me, my imaginary organization does photography and it's photography skills that I want to teach to young people. So I'll come here and tick because photography is listed here under visual arts and crafts. So I'll do that. If it was in something else, there's a bunch of all other areas here. We have vlogging, video games, virtual and augmented reality. There's anything in books and press, anything from eBooks, printed matter, physical and virtual libraries, book fairs. Um, there's culture, cultural and natural heritage like museums, archeological and historical places, 
people working in cultural food and cuisine, in hair, beauty, and cosmetic products that have cultural and natural heritage importance. Um, there's all number of different um, places. We even have rituals, languages, social practices, um, performing arts, uh, fairs and feasts, if you're interested in that sort of thing. So that's what you come and take, the one that is your main area. Now, in our research, we found that a lot of uh, people in the creative and cultural industries work in multiple disciplines, and so you probably want to come and take here as a, as a response, do you engage in any other creative and cultural industries? So I've already ticked this here, so I wouldn't need to take it again. But then if I was engaged in anything else, so for instance, in my photography work, I'm involved in creative and cultural education. In fact, it's what I want to do. I can come and tick. Please note that this says um, tick all that apply. So if you do cultural infrastructure, if you do design and creative services, so maybe because I'm a photographer, I work in fashion, I'll come and tick there. Um, if I'm part of documenting um, some of these things, oral traditions and expressions, um, rituals, social practices and food and cuisine, I'll also come and take there. So it really depends on what you are already doing. And so for us, this is a really interesting question so that we don't necessarily box you into what your main area of focus is. It might help us to understand you a lot better when we understand the full dimensions of the work that you do. So these are the eligibility questions and we've answered all of them. So let's stop here for now. Now and then going to the next part, which is capturing your contact information. So now at this point in time, we're interested in your contact information. For me, my hypothetical arts organization that's doing this applying is called Scorpio Images. I'm being asked what the physical address of my organization is. Remember, we had chosen Madagascar, so I scroll down all the way to Madagascar, and then I paste my address. Here we are asked who is the primary contact person for this organization. Joki Ngomi here. Joki at scorpioimages.com. So please make sure that you enter the telephone number for the organization and the email address where we're able to reach you. If we ask if your organization has a website, some people um, have websites, others don't, it's okay. Please don't feel like you must. You can just answer yes or no. So if my organization has a website, I say yes. Scorpioimages.com. I'm asked if my organization has any social media presence and I say yes. Then I provide the link. Whichever it is, you'll just kind of come and enter all of the links um, that you feel are relevant. The contact parts is really short. You just enter your organization name, your physical address has, has been given, who your primary contact person is, um, providing a telephone number for the organization, an email address where we can reach you. You enter your website and you enter your social media presence. So we are actually now quite ready to go into the next part of this um, application. Now what we need to do is find out more about your organization. Here um, you have to say whether you're applying as an individual organization or as a group of organizations. If you're applying as an individual organization, we go straight into asking you all these questions. But if you're applying as a group, uh, remember that it's the lead applicant who's making the application. And so you come and you say that you're applying as a group. And so we need details requiring each partner organization involved in the application. If you have five other organizations participating and you as the lead applicant are the sixth, then you need to come and give the details of all five of the others. So like, let's say for me, um, I'm applying as a group together with um, another another photography company called Aquarius Images. That's the sort of thing that I would have to do. And then please read this paragraph here under uh, the details that you need to give. The lead applicant making the application, the lead applicant must be from one of the 14 eligible countries and the project activities will need to benefit target populations in the ACP countries in the region. So those would be the, the same 14 countries that we had talked about. And then lead applicants may apply with a co-applicant from another African country, including outside the 14 eligible countries or an EU state. And we talk about where you find this list of eligible African countries um, a lot in the 
in the eligibility criteria that's present on the HIVA website. We also discuss it in the downloadable uh, frequently asked questions as well as in the guidelines. So you'll be able to find all those all that information there. As regards the details that we have to enter with, with regard to partner organization, then come and you give their names, you give a contact person and whatever contacts that you have. So for this, um, the contact is called Mars. Masai, and that Mars Masai is the founder and director because we're asked to give their roles in the project. So we say the founder and director. Please enable us to find Mars Masai by giving Mars's uh, phone number, etc. And then I can also give Mars's email address. If you have two, three other partner organizations, please come and put all of their names here. Again, because you're the lead applicant, you'll answer these questions about yourself. We'll ask, we'll ask question, more questions about the partnering organizations if the application proceeds. So let's say at Scorpio Images, I have one full-time employee. So I come and I see the definition of full-time employment as an employee working a minimum number of hours as defined by the employer, usually comes often comes with benefits that are not typically offered to part-time temporary or flexible workers, such as annual leave, sick leave, so maybe I have one full-time employee who does a minimum number of hours as defined by me in a contract. So that's the person that I come and enter here. How many of my full-time employees are women? Maybe none. This full-time employee that I have might be a man. So I can actually just say none. Then I'm um, asked how many of my full-time employees are from marginalized groups. We give a definition of what a marginalized group is here. So please read it carefully. If you know any of your full-time employees um, um, come from these marginalized groups, we would want you to say um, how many of them do. If you have none, um, then you just say you don't have any. We ask about part-time employees and we talk about what the definition of a part-time employee is. So it's fewer hours than co the considerations of full-time and also could be the nature of work. So you can come and say, yes, you have part-time employees. We'll ask how many you have. Let's say for me, I have four. And then out of these four, three of them are women. Then let's say I know that two of them are from marginalized groups. Then sometimes you work with volunteers, sometimes you don't. So let us say yes, we do work with volunteers. So we say how many volunteers have we worked with? Maybe we work only with two. Some people work with 50, whatever. So you just put yours down. Um, are your volunteers paid or unpaid? Some people only work with volunteers that they can't pay. And then there's those who work with volunteers that they pay. So let's say for me, um, I have a mix of volunteers. And so I work with both. I need to name up to three organizations or individuals my organization has collaborated with in the past. Jane Smith. And then I say this is a photographer. I have worked with Ajima Nasigana, who is a model, Parachichi, graphic design. And then you come and you talk about um, your organization and its ongoing core activities. So I come and say Scorpio Images is X and Y and Z, and I 250 words to do that. And I talk about my geographical focus, where is Scorpio Images located, who are my target. So I come and I talk about all of that. And again, I have another 250 words. You'll see this great text here guiding you. Tell us who you serve, where you serve them, who will you serve, um, and where are they. What role do your target communities play in your proposed project and what benefits does your project offer them? If you want to say that you are going to be trying to serve in more countries than your, the one that you chose, so like remember for me, I had chosen uh, Madagascar, Seychelles and Mauritius, then I also say that here. Tell us about the project that made you apply for this fund. So come and tell us a little bit about it. What would you like to do with these funds? And you can cross-reference your project goals with these grant objectives. So if you are unsure about the grant objectives, you can just click there and it will just open a little separate supplementary information place and you'll see these exact objectives that we were talking about um, earlier. So you choose the one that applies to you and then you go back. How will the creative and cultural work of your organization be improved by this project? Project. It shouldn't just improve the beneficiaries, it should also improve um, you people, the ones who are going to uh, do the implementing. So we say, tell us about the impact of your project on the skills, audience and network building, revenue generation, inclusivity and other developmental outcomes for your organization. And we give you 250 words to do that. And we also ask, how will the creative and cultural work of your beneficiaries be improved by this project? Come and explain that to us here in 250 words. So remember, we ask you first how you will be improved and then we ask 
ask your beneficiaries how they will be improved. We ask what role will digital technology, such as platforms, channels, or apps, play in the implementation and support of this project. We explain that it would be digital technology platforms like websites, social media platforms, electronic communications mediums, and such in its implementation, documentation, and uh, communication. So you come and explain that again in 250 words. So you just come and tell us, tell us, tell us all of these things. This is the chunk where sometimes it's good to have your people come and collaborate. So it was great that I had asked those collaborators to come in. If you really feel this is the point where you want people to come and start collaborating with you, then this is the point at which you would want to invite them. That's uh, one of the meatiest chunk of the application. And at least you're done. We're now going into finding out more about your individual needs as an organization. Now we're at the place where we need to find out a little bit more about your needs. We're finding out about what the resourcing for this project will be. So the question is, how much funding are you applying for in this cycle? Remember that um, you list the total amount that you're applying for in euro. If you're working in your local currency, you can convert your totals here. So if you come here and click, it will take you to a place where you can apply. Remember for me, I'm applying from Madagascar and the currency of Madagascar is called the Ariari. And I can then come and convert it directly to euro. So like, let's say 500,000 Ariari and then I just come and I convert and then it will give me the amount of money that I want to put. So further, we explain that tier one can apply for a fixed amount of 30,000 euro, and you will discover, um, because you, you will have read the guidelines, um, how we are figuring out how much money you can apply for. Um, you want to apply for an amount of money that you have proof that you have handled half of it before. So for instance, to apply for... This fixed amount of 30,000 euro, you need to um, give us financials that show that you have handled at least half of this amount, which is 15,000 euro, or it's equivalent in your in your currency so that you can apply for this 30,000. If you want to apply for the 90,000, you must have handled at least 45,000 euro. If you want to apply for 180,000 euro, you should at least have handled 90,000 euro. So all of this information is here, and you can just come and click to learn more about the three tiers here. So let's say I'm at tier two and I want to apply for 90,000 euros. So I just come here and write my 90,000. Then uh, will you or your project partners make a financial contribution to the budget? This is, um, are you able to give some money to the project? Um, please don't worry if you're not able to do so. A financial contribution to the project does not affect your application's eligibility or even its quality. So please don't worry about that. So maybe I'm not going to make a direct financial contribution, me and my project partners, and remember it was Aquarius Photos, so no, we won't. But in the event that you said yes, then we'll ask what percentage of the budget you want to give. So if we said yes, and maybe we're giving uh, 5%, then we'll just come and say that we're giving 5% um, of the budget. And this is 5% of uh, the funding that I'm applying for. Is my project receiving any financing from any other sources? If it's not, then I come and I say no. But in the event that it is, I come and I say yes. Um, and again, co-financing your project budget does not affect your eligibility, so don't worry about saying that you have co-financing or that you don't have co-financing. Either is completely fine. We just want to map what exactly the needs are. And then now you can come and say the percentage. But remember for mine, for the purposes of this example, the answer is no. Then we are asking about um, capacity building needs. So we are developing a support program to help cultural and creative organizations like yours to develop for the long term. Which areas of development do you feel are most needed by you and the sector that this program should focus on? So you can come and say, actually, I really need to learn how to sell my things online. So it's digital commerce that's the most interesting. We also talk about applying for funding because a lot of people uh, tell us that they need to learn how to apply for funding. Maybe I'm not interested in that, but I am interested in financial management understanding accounting and investment. So I put that and that this allows me to take all that apply. You can literally come and take all of them if that's what works for you. Then um, the, the last part of this understanding your needs, then I come and list my top three non-financial needs, which would build uh, my organization's capacity. So this can include training, technical knowledge, and archiving, if you see this gray text here at the bottom. So like actually maybe I am interested in having further advanced training for my interns. So I just come and say, maybe one of the things that Scorpio Images has done is um, figure out how to put together an online course, but then we don't know what to do with it. Like how do we upload it? It. So I just come and I put all of those things down there, uh, whatever it is that my non-financial needs are, not needs that can be solved by money, but things that you feel this is what my organization would really gain from. 
congratulations for getting to this last step in the application. It's been a long one. So this is a very big deal. Thank you for sticking this out with us. And our promise to you is that we'll take each and every single one of the applications that are submitted very, very seriously. So please make sure that you're giving us the very best information that you can. We are now at the place where we are uploading our supporting documents. And so um, each of these documents has different uh, requirements. We're asking here for financial statements for any annual period between January 2018 and March 2021. You can select up to five files. So for me, I'll come here and choose my pre-prepared file. And here we have my Scorpio Images financial statements. That's what I'll come here and upload. And you see here, it says you must upload at least one file. We also explain what a financial statement is. These are documents that enable us to understand your business's financial health and can include an income statement, balance sheets, or a cash flow statement. And that if you have other things, such as your bank or mobile money statements, you can just get an accountant to help you prepare any of these other things. They can prepare an income statement, they can prepare a balance sheet, and they can prepare a cash flow statement. So um, definitely that has already been uploaded. Then over here, we need to upload a specific financial statement to demonstrate that your organization has handled at least half of the amount that you're requesting in this application. This can be in the form of a project or organizational audit. So it just so happens that I have a Scorpio Images audit here, and I just upload that. And then we come over here to the proposed project budget. So here is the Scorpio Images budget. And remember that this budget uh, needs to be prepared with the templates that we had given before. So make sure about that. Then there is my company profile, and I have a Scorpio Images company profile. So I'll just upload it. Uh, remember that the documents that are allowed are your .doc, your .docx, and your PDF. And we gave a template for this at the top of the application. And for group applications, you want to put up a separate application for them. So remember, for me, I also need an Aquarius Photos company profile, so I should put that here. There is also project history. Here we go, Scorpio Images project history, and I just upload that. So remember the project history also has a template that we gave that needs to be filled. The same with the proposed budget and the same with the company profile. So all of these things, I have uploaded them. And then we come to you did it. Congratulations on getting to the end of the application. Hit the submit form to complete your application. So you see, it tells me that I have successfully submitted the form. I will receive updates by email. To ensure that you receive all notifications, follow these steps. So you can come here and open this. And then you can also check on the status of this anytime in your submittable account. So now if I click here on my submittable account, it comes and tells me that um, I have sent in my Scorpio Images application. That means that we are done. Uh, please, again, uh, make sure that you reach out to us on our socials, on our Ignite Culture socials, as well as on the email, igniteculture at hevafund.com if you have any particular questions about the filling of this form. Uh, please don't worry if it takes you long this time. Please get help if you need um, help and, and people can help you fill in the form. You can invite in a collaborator, somebody um, who is your mentor, somebody that you receive respect uh, or somebody that you want to work with, any of these um, potential collaborators, uh, to be able to apply with them. There's some things here about how you can make sure that you get these notification emails so that they don't end up somehow in your spam folders. Thank you so much for sitting with us through these videos. Please don't feel bad about watching them again. Um, if you need to understand, again, drop us a line uh, if there's any issues and we will be here to help you. Best, best wishes with the applications and we are really, really looking forward to receiving them. Have a wonderful day.